Hi. So far, all of our programming has been carried out in a linear line-by-line -line fashion. Real-world programming doesn't work like that. You don't type in the same line of code again if you need your program to execute the same sequence further down the line of code. Function is the first step toward code reusability. Let's learn about it now. Consider this lines of code. There is nothing wrong with the codes, except that you have repeated codes here and here. Things like this are a big no-no in programming. This is where the concept of function comes in. Now you only have to call the same function to run the same lines of code like this. The way function is being used here is rather questionable. But this is so that we can examine the features of a function in Python. Let's do that. This is the anatomy of a function in Python. There are a lot of built-in functions in Python. For example, instead of asking the user to type in the current year, you can call upon a Python function to give you that data directly. Beginners are often confused about what are functions and what are methods, and rightfully so, because their syntax constructions are the same. The only difference is function returns something, while method doesn't. So, you put a bunch of codes together and you get a function. What if you put a bunch of functions together? You get a class. Welcome to the world of object-oriented programming. Complicated long lines of scrolling computer code looks really awesome in movies. However, if computer languages are to tackle real-world issues, it would be rather helpful if it could synthetically represent the world we live in. Not because they have to, but because humans can only deal with so much abstract thinking before they wind in the mental hospital. Or getting Nobel Prizes. Hmm. So, how do you represent a real-world object with codes? Let's use moi as an example. I'm a Neanderthal slash Homo sapien hybrid, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just call me human. Let's create a human class slash object. <laughs> this is the basic structure of a class. And this is how you create an instance of a class. Go ahead, type this in and see what happens. Now let's create some static variables. What is a static variable? It is very easy to understand, especially so when we're using humans as an example. As humans, we can all have different names, but regardless of whether your name is Stewie or Tad, you will always have two arms, two legs, and ten fingers. No matter how many instances of human you create, they will all have this in common. These common properties are called static variables. Is it enough? Let's create two static variables right now. Any variables that you create inside a class but outside any function in a class will automatically be a static variable. Here's the block to clarify the location static variable should be created in. This is where static variables should be outside of any functions in a class. This is how you access the variable from outside the class. Notice that you do not have to instantiate the class like this to access it, even though you can. Here is an interesting note. If you change the variable's value like this, all instances of the class will have their variable's value changed. However, if you update it using an instance of the class, it will effectively hold its own unique value, and other instances of the same class will not be affected. It is also through this mechanism that you can assign unique values to different instances of the same class. 
In this case, we use names for example. Different humans can have different names. Moving on to more variable scope goodies. Take a good look at this code. This variable was created in this function. It will also be destroyed from within it. There is no way for you to access this variable outside of this function, much less from outside this class. If you want to be able to reference this variable from outside this function, or even outside the class, you just have to prefix the keyword self to it. Now you will be able to retrieve the data in this variable outside. I will finish off this part with a rather controversial keyword in Python. Observe this code. What do you think will be the output of this code? Try typing this out. See if you were right. Were you surprised by the result? Or should I say, the error? This begs the question. How do you access a variable outside of the class? The answer to this is the keyword global. Type this in. You will see that it works now. The global keyword tells Python that you are about to access a variable in the main program. It should be noted that many professionals get by using Python without using this keyword ever. Even I am slightly stunned when I first encounter this keyword. There is nothing wrong with this keyword. It simply looks incoherent in a language design sense. Notice that in Python, you do not have to ready a variable like this. One can safely say that there is no variable declarative statement in Python. Sure, the keyword global in this case was not used in a declarative sense, but just look at it. It looks so odd in a sea of Python codes. But it is what it is, and as I have said, some people get by never using it. On the next video, we'll be talking about file IO access in Python. Because as we all know, a programming language without the capacity to access files directly is just a toy language. See you next week.